Hello everybody, how are you? <laughs> Why am I talking like this? Saturday folks, Saturday, beautiful. Dusty clouds, but mostly sunny summer Saturday in Los Angeles and it's gonna be probably 81 today probably 81 is a high it's probably 81 above that right now folks are getting such a great response from this video series is last few videos that I'm doing here uh, called <laughs> things you can only do in El Paso was the first one second one was things you can only do in San Antonio and then Dallas so I thought we'd take the occasion to throw a dart in the liberal heart of Texas, and that being Austin. Everybody loves Austin, the music, the tech, the traffic jams. I was there in 1995, and the traffic has not changed since. <laughs> the traffic has only gotten worse. <laughs> I think the same people managing traffic for Los Angeles are advising Austin. <laughs> yeah, don't do anything. It'll work itself out. So, folks, without further ado, <laughs> without further ado, off the top of my head, freestyling, here are 10 things you can only do in Austin, Texas. And since we led up to it with that teaser, let's just jump right into... In Austin, Texas, you can approach the city from any direction and the cars will be backed up for 400 miles from outside the city, bumper to bumper, because there are exactly two, count them, two major roads in and out of Austin. They have the road that goes north and south that they call north Southy. that's right that's the name of the road north Southy. and then they have a road that runs east and west they call east westy you can take north Southy or east westy to get into the city and that's it that's all you can do folks so as a result the traffic is backed up for 400 miles in each of those directions now you'd say well why don't they just put in some more roads folks we're trying to preserve the nature of Austin. We know there's been a lot of growth, but we're trying to preserve its home town feel, its small town feel. And so the one way that they're limiting growth is by limiting the access to vehicles, trucks, vans, shuttles, bicycles. Actually, bicycles, we'll, we'll let you in. That's, that's uh, part of the uh, plan is to uh, increase bicycle use. So, folks, <laughs> you think L.A. is bad. Once you head out to Austin, prepare to, to be bumper to bumper for 400 miles on one of two roads going in. You got north Southy, and you got east Westy. That's one of the only things you can do in Austin, Texas. Number two. Austin bats. Well, if you're not that familiar with Austin, the Austin bats are a local phenomena. They are real life bats, as in Batman bats. <laughs> hey, some people don't know what a bat is, but they know Batman. Uh, but unlike the Cape Crusader, these are real bats, and they are in the millions millions of bats cover the city every year they they're, they're, they're like they cloud the, they cover the city they blot out the sun so finally the city just said what can we do to take it they're not going to go anywhere we can't get rid of them so they're working with the synchronized swim team coaches at the University of Texas and they developed a synchronized bat show that they debuted in early 2019. Now this is 
been kept on the down low, so it probably is not in the tourism guides or in online searches, but rest assured that every Saturday there is a uh, synchronized bat show in downtown Austin. Guys, it's amazing because you're talking millions and millions of bats in a synchronized formation, and they recreate historical scenes of Texas, like the Alamo. They recreate uh, current events, like the Kardashians coming out with a new shade of lipstick. All kinds of, uh, just, and it's all to music. It's all set to music. And next year, in fact, they're working with the music department at the University of Texas to teach the bats to play the music. It's unbelievable. So there you go. That's one of the top 10 things you can only do in Austin, Texas, guys. It's number two. That's the synchronized bat show. Check it out this summer and ongoing in Austin, Texas. Number three. Well, of course, Austin is well known for the uh, music scene. You can walk down 6th Street and you hear the jazz, you'll hear country, you'll hear uh, hillbilly, you'll, you'll hear disco, you'll hear uh, heavy metal. Well, in the new 6th Street Super Mall, it's an indoor version of Coachella. Now, what do I mean? Coachella is an outdoor music festival with multiple stages. Uh, featuring different kinds of music on each stage. So you've got the heavy metal stage, the country music stage. The new Sixth Street Super Bowl has all of that indoors. Now why? Why is it indoors? Because of the bats. Guys, it's hard to have an outdoor music concert if the bats are dropping guana all over everybody. You know, people get their best kind of rock music festival outfit on so they can look good in their Instas. Well, it doesn't look good if you got guana on the top of your head. So, folks, it's indoors. It's no worry. The 6th Street Super Mall uh, Rock Festival Pavilion. It's uh, 40,000 square acres under one roof. <laughs> why do the acres, why do all acres have to be square? Aren't there any round acres? <laughs> <laughs> that just made no sense. Can you imagine 40,000 square feet? Well, let's go with it, guys. Sold you on freestyling, guys. We're making this stuff up on the fly. And uh, sometimes it just cracks me up. Uh, number four. Things you can only do in Austin, Texas. Number four. You can tour the Lagunista factory. Now, what's a Lagunista? That is a new electric car that was invented by a local uh you might call him a crazy inventor crazy wealthy inventor uh, this guy was a silent partner in the growth of dell everybody knows about michael dell well where did michael dell come up with the, that scratch to get that thing going is this guy the crazy wealthy inventor that decided to come out with his own electric car kind of like tesla in a sense but this is the Texas style Tesla, you might say. It's the Lagunista. It comes with uh, horns on the front, some bull riding horns, bull horns. <laughs> and all of, you get, one, you get one choice of interior, okay? And that's leopard skin on the interior. That's leopard skin, there's no other options. And then, of course, when you hit the horn, it plays Mama, Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up To Be Cowboys. Guys, you want to tour this factory, it's amazing. It's the Lagunista Electric Car Factory just outside of Austin. Uh, visit it this summer, number four. Or are we in three or four? <laughs> number four. <laughs> How do you lose track after only four numbers? <laughs> All right, let's just go with it. If it's extra, we'll consider it a bonus because people love these videos, guys. People love them. <laughs> Number four, Austin, Texas. And speaking of the University of Texas, you know, it takes a lot of grief because, uh, you know, it's so big and so vast and everybody knows somebody that went there. It's kind of the Ohio State University of Texas. <laughs> oh, man. 
man. Oh, that was that was harsh. <laughs> you call you call a university the, the Ohio State University of Texas. That makes no sense at all. That makes no sense at all. Uh, other than they're both giant universities, I think that was the, the connection. So, in order to keep um, students coming to, to the University of Texas, and like all colleges, they have to compete now for students. And to encourage people to come there, they have taken on a beautification process, a project at the campus, including adding modern art from local modern artists out of Austin, born and raised, Tex Wiley Art Instaliski. And Tex Wiley Art Instaliski is well known for his uh, three story tall figurines shaped like iguanas and puppies playing with each other. And in fact, the first version of this, Puppies and Iguanas Playing with Each Other, was purchased by Michael Dell and, and was originally going to be slated to be outside the Dell uh, computer campus there. The uh, huge complex that he has out there making those Dell computers for everybody. But some phone calls were made and now that installation is going to be at the University of Texas and everybody's excited about it because not only are they engaging and heartwarming, but each of the puppies and iguanas, uh, there's probably 10, 12 of them, three stories tall. Each of them has uh, their own special blazer, their own special jacket. And one of them is a psychedelic, one of them's sort of a kind of a tie-dye affair. One of them looks like a blue blazer that Michael J. Fox might have worn on uh, Family Ties, you know, kind of a conservative look. And the idea is to reflect the tastes and fashions of all kinds of people because this installation is to bring everybody together. That's, <laughs> that's number four. <laughs> Let's call it four. I don't know. Number five, folks, number five. <laughs> Number five uh, of things you can only do in Austin, Texas. Of course, everybody's uh, seen hang gliding. Everybody's seen the uh, kite riding you can do behind boats down in Baja. They tow you behind a tow you behind a boat, a speedboat, and you go flying through the air. And you're up about uh, it's a couple hundred feet up there, and you're flying around and taking pictures for your Insta. Well, this is the most exciting thing I've heard in a long time. It's rodeo kite uh, tow, rodeo kite tow. And you get towed by some real life cowboys on a kite behind a moving, uh, moving cattle drive. There's a real life cattle drive and as part of the fun, they will tow you by a couple of uh, real cowboys with two horses latched onto the rope and you need two of them to pull a uh, human that's a lot of pull and you will go flying high in the sky above the plains of texas watching the cattle move slowly toward uh toward the markets in kansas city guys it's an exciting new thing uh down there in austin and it's one of the things you can only do in austin texas number six of course what is austin known for folks it's friendliness well what happens when a new yorker decides to pick up uh, pull up stakes and move to austin and enjoy the good life well it's not quite that easy right i mean who hasn't been in a stop and go or a 7-eleven or any kind of convenience store and heard somebody from new york barking orders yelling impatient pounding on the pounding on the counter where's my Where's my black and white cookie? Where's my black and white cookie that they're used to getting in Brooklyn since they were children? Well, you know, that don't fly. That doesn't fly in Austin, right? But it's not their fault. That's the environment they grew up in. It's no big deal. 
So the extension department of the University of Texas is now offering New Yorker to Austinite transition courses. And in fact, they're offering a certificate in this. You can take all five courses and get a certificate and put it proudly on your wall. And by that time, you'll be able to move smoothly through Austin society. And just next thing you know, you'll be wearing a bolo tie. You'll be a New Yorker with a bolo tie. And you'll be saying, well, how y'all doing? To every one of your neighbors, you'll fit right in. So folks, that's one of the things you can only get in Austin, Texas. That's number six. Number seven. Well, Austin is, of course, in the middle of the state, and it takes takes a lot of grief for being a liberal bastion. And, of course, there's other pockets of uh, liberal uh, thinking through, through the state, like uh, Murphy, Murphy, Texas, and a few others. Probably a couple suburbs of Houston voted for Obama. I don't know. Probably a couple. I have no idea. But the thing is, that's a lot of weight to put on one city in a vast land known as Texas. So the state, in order to try to balance out the liberal versus conservative geographic diversity, is going to have a number of buses riding around and uh, coming from Austin riding around the state educating people on liberal thinking liberal voting liberal policies in a in an attempt to uh, uh, for, frankly they don't ex expect any kind of success to be honest with you their their, their whole uh campaign is based on uh outreach it's, you can, you know it's it's uh they figure the whole campaign is if we can get one person to vote for one of the 700 current candidates for president on the Democratic ticket. There's currently 700 candidates. If we can get one person in Texas to switch their vote, then it will be a success. Well, you say, well, that's not a very high success rate. Well, they know what they're up against. But again, it's an outreach thing. They're going to have buses driving around the state, talking about what liberalism is and you know, in certain parts of Texas. Uh, things move kind of slow. They've never even heard of a liberal. They don't even know what it is. So the city officials, uh, working with state officials there in Austin, being the seat of the state government as well, of course, figured that's the least they could do to try to balance out the conservative views of, this, of the rest of the state by sending 30, 40, 50 buses driving around between now and Election Day of uh, 2020. And if it's a success, they might, uh, there's plans to maybe repeat it uh, ongoing. And to really put a button hook on it, to uh, make it a, kind of painful, actually, the buses will be paid for by tax money generated by Texas uh, citizens, most of which are conservative. So there you have conservatives paying for liberals to drive buses around and hand out leaflets. Um... I give it about two weeks <laughs> before each of those buses have flat tires from, uh, you know, accidents. <laughs> All right, what was that? Was that number seven? What are we on? Eight? I don't know. Golly, guys. I should quit numbering them. I can never keep track of them. Uh, number eight of the things you can only do in Texas. I think that was it. Whatever. Doesn't matter. So, uh, everybody loves Disney. Everybody loves animation, Mickey Mouse, cartoons. Well, a lot of people don't know. There's a much-loved Texas cartoon character that is set to break out into a wider audience across the country. That's right, it's Texy the Mouse. And Texy the Mouse is a, is a rambunctious uh, sca uh, sc scamp. <laughs> and he lives in the uh, engineering building at the University of Texas. And he sets out on adventures every day throughout the city. He goes into the, to the litter by lakes and he swims around and he's got his, all of his cartoon friends. And this character is so popular in Texas and a lot of people don't know about it, but you know, it doesn't take long before Hollywood sniffs a winner and here comes Hollywood. And of course there's all kinds of, uh, you know, success stories out of Texas, including Matthew McConaughey, 
Sandra Bullock and a bunch of other stars and writers and movies uh, Mike Judge everybody they're all from Texas so there's a mastermind of Hollywood uh, animators writers uh, choreographers and uh, back massagers back and neck massage team that is going to be debuting Texie the Mouse uh, big screen introduction big screen premiere it's very exciting that's number eight that's only in Texas only in Austin Texas one of the ten things you could only do in Austin Texas currently see Texie the Mouse soon to be nationwide on the big screen number nine guys LA is seeing a resurgence of building and construction and you know frankly Austin is no different and one of the most exciting projects is by famed architect Pierte Laguela Pierte Laguela the Italian brilliant uh, architectural mind who came up with the giant orange juice can in Houston that's seven seven stories tall he came up with the giant milk jug down there in San Antonio while well, Austin is getting its own oversized uh, architectural wonder it's a new condo and office complex with retail stores and entertainment uh, selections choices opportunities uh, on the ground floor and guys it's going to be <laughs> it's a giant it's a giant cowboy rope you've seen the arch in st. Louis this is the giant cowboy rope it's basically a cowboy's lariat that is coiled on the ground and so the coils of the rope will encircle the city it's gonna be that big it's gonna be miles and miles and miles long and probably seven eight stories tall that seems to be the the uh, height that uh, this particular star architect likes to work with it's very exciting it's gonna take 30 40 years to finish but building is already construction and that is something that you can only do only see in Austin Texas and finally number 10 or whatever number it should be <laughs> I need a little pad <laughs> scratch and finally number 10 guys Texas has a certain look Perhaps you call it country, perhaps you call it western. Some old school people like me call it country western. But how, how did that evolve? Well, at the History of Country Western Wear Museum, you can find out where this entire look started. How about snap button cowboy shirts? You wanna know how that started? I've been to the museum. This is just one interesting tidbit that you'll find out. So the snap button came out of the Alamo. And as the Alamo, uh, you know, attack continued, uh, the guys needed a way to rip off their shirts quick so they could tie the, their arms or legs, whatever was bleeding, they could tie it off. And they had a guy, uh, they had a kid that was there. He wasn't old enough to fight, but... He was an expert sewer, seamstress, uh, needle and thread guy. They called him a needle and thread guy. He was like 12 years old and he developed these skills by sewing his own clothes because he grew up on the streets. He would take old newspapers and sew them together <laughs> into pants. And they turned to him and they said uh, his name was Sandy Sandy. Sandy, can you make us a button real quick and sew it on our shirt so that we can, we can rip it off real quick? And, so that we need to uh, bandage up our arm or tie a, tie off an arm so that it, you know cut the cut the blood flow. And he's like, I can do it! I can do it! And he went to work in the Alamo basement and he came up with the snap snap button technique. And uh, you know, as the battle raged, he asked everybody, "Well, take your shirt off real quick. I'll replace the buttons with the new snap buttons." And uh, sure enough, within three or four hours, all of the uh, fighters, Sam Houston, everybody, they all had the new snap button shirts and it just was handed down generation after generation. It's another of the legends that Texas is known for and why people love the state so much. Guys, 
That's number 10, and it's the final of our 10 things you can only do in Austin, Texas. I think they're 10. There were roughly 10, about 10, M more or less 10. 